there's a lot of inflammation uh, up and down throughout the dermis. We get a deep uh, punch biopsy here, but you can see the Grenn zone from here. And then if we zoom in, um, well, there's Grenn zone. You can see the hair follicles. See the inflammation. The inflammation when we zoom in is mixed, and then that kind of comes together for, for granuloma faciality. And some of these areas do look like granuloma-like as well. Yeah, it, you're right. In this case, it, it actually does look like there's kind of granuloma here, but usually I would say that granuloma faciality, does, the granuloma is in the name only, right? It, there are histiocytes in it, but you don't usually see well-formed granulomas in granuloma faciality. So um, the, the low power, like you said, is that you've got uh, infiltrate kind of filling up the dermis, but preserving the structures. And I think that's a kind of a theme that we've seen in a lot of these things. Histiocytes and inflammatory cells can, can trickle in between the collagen and kind of surround but not displace the other, uh, the normal dermal structures. <clears throat> you can see that same thing with lymphomas and leukemias too. Sometimes they just fill in the spaces without always uh, pushing other stuff out of the way. Unfortunately, we got a little fold up here, but you can tell that there is a little grens, a zone of uninvolved dermis right there. <clears throat> Usually, I don't find the concept of grens zone very helpful diagnostically. Uh, it's a classic finding that's taught in derm path, but I don't talk about it very much because I don't find it that helpful. But yes, it is true that in granular facial, you usually do have this little zone of sparing where the infiltrate doesn't go all the way up to the epidermis. It kind of leaves a little band of epidermis, I mean, of dermis uninvolved and a space between the epidermis and the process. And then close up, like you said, it's a mixed infiltrate, histiocytes, lymphocytes, eosinophils, plasma cells, the most helpful thing to me is the neutrophils and the way the neutrophils are here. Because we see lymphs and histiocytes and EOs and stuff in lots of different things, right? <clears throat> but what we don't usually see is neutrophils evenly scattered throughout that kind of an infiltrate. We may see like aggregates or, you know, like little pockets, little micro abscesses of neutrophils. But in G-facial, even though in some areas they are kind of clustered, in many areas, you were seeing like a peppering or scattering of neutrophils mixed in with all these histiocytes, lymphocytes, and eosinophils. And, and to my eye, that is a pattern that is really unique. And, and I don't usually see that in other inflammatory things or infectious processes. It has a, a distinct look. Once you've seen a few cases of this, I feel like it has a really distinct look. And so, yeah, you would want to make sure that you thought about infection or other things if you see this, but usually uh, this pattern is pretty distinct. And so the scattered uh, neutrophils in this uh, mixture of other inflammatory cells, and it's usually kind of a reddish brown indurated papule or plaque or nodule on the face, and that's granuloma facial. Sometimes you can begin to see some vasculitis and perivascular fibrosis in this setting, and that's because the other entity which may have some relationship to this is erythema elevatum diutinum or EED. And that is more fibrotic nodules, usually on the extremities, <clears throat> and is a kind of a fibrosing vasculitis, but it can have some microscopic overlap with granuloma facial. And some people have proposed that there may be some sort of link or relationship between them. So just so that's on your radar as a thing that could maybe look a little bit similar.